Previously on Phoenix Wright Trials and Tribulations. Excuse me, what are you working on right now? Ah! I'm researching the impact of time slicing common areas and most threat of logical there to share global variables. Obviously, program structure heavily influences response time performance of the code and independence of global variables. The variable overhead is virtually important to the success of the execution. Yeah. And now back to staring at people. Hello! Sticko B, back with some more Phoenix Wright Trials and Tribulations. We last left off, we've uncovered a bit more of the mystery, and now it's starting to make a bit more sense to me. Uh, it looks like uh, Jean Armstrong's gonna be in on this whole thing, because he's under the thumb of the the Lone Sharks. It was funny how I, I, I started off the episode, last episode, like, being afraid of of, of uh, Violetta or, or Violet or whatever, and uh, but then in the end, I felt bad for her, because, I don't know, she ended up being a bit more sympathetic than... She came across. <laughs> She's not quite the, the crazy psycho we all thought. So, um, I'll be curious to see exactly who was the one who did the killing. If it really was the spike, just the spikier guy, with, uh, or if she like was the one who did it. You know, received orders or something. So, all right, let's fucking do this shit. It looks like this will be two parts again. Yeah, January eight, nine forty six a.m. Just recorded defendant lobby number one. Always a different defendant lobby. I just realized that. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Wright. Good morning, Maggie! So, what do, you, what do you think is going to happen today, sir? You say session didn't go so well, and then ended on a giant mystery. I hope, I hope Maggie ends up coming back around for, uh, to liking Gumshoe again. Because I feel bad for Gumshoe. He's trying so fucking hard. I never even gave her, I never even gave her his other weenies. I still got them. <laughs> ew, ew, they're all cold and gross. <laughs> That's true. And we still haven't solved a single part of it yet. Are you okay, Nick? Uh, oh, uh, yeah. Of course. I saw that, that little flash of doubt in your eyes. <laughs> no, that wasn't doubt. That was, um, determination. Why don't I believe you? Uh, it's because it's the fake me again. Ah! I'm just fucking with you. Fuck you. Third time, Maggie. You better get going to the defendant's seat. Roger, don't let me down, Mr. Wright. I'm counting on you. Farewell. Uh, hey, <laughs> Hey, there you shoot. Did you get rid of the weenies? <laughs> What'd you say about my weenies? <laughs> Quit stressing Maggie out. She, do she doesn't need that. How'd you know she was stressed? I, I was watching through the doorway. <laughs> <laughs> also, come on. You're going on a fucking trial. Who wouldn't be stressed about that? I could go to the uh, jail for the rest of my life or maybe even be fucking executed. <laughs> but I'm fine. <laughs> oh. You look like you lost, lost the case already. Show a bit of confidence, will you, pal? Here, maybe this will help. Oh, have you taken up aromatherapy too? <laughs> Not in a million years, pal. Don't tell me that you don't remember this thing. God dang it. Damn it, my. <laughs> yeah, is it, uh, is it going to be in poison? Eh? Yeah. Oh, come to think of it, that doesn't look like one of those aromatherapy bottles. Come on, man. I I was the one who fucking found this thing. It's a small bottle you turned up in Trey Bien's kitchen a couple days ago. <laughs> wow, look at all these bottles. Ass back when I was dressed so cute. Oh, the aromatherapy oils. He's got so many they were flowing under the floor. Hey, wait a minute. There's one a bit, there's a bottle's a bit different from all the others. Well, what do you know? It doesn't have a label on it either. It <laughs> sniff doesn't <no> smell. <laughs> it smells like death. We finally got the analysis back, results back from the lab. So what is it? Is, a po is it a poison? I'm afraid not, pal. Uh, all right, what is it then? It's medication. Oh. Oh. Oh, there's his ear medication. That's it. Oh, of course. Why would John, why would Armstrong have it though? I mean, I know he's up for stealing shit, but why would you steal ear medication? <laughs> oh, I can totally sell this on the uh, Dr. Black Market. I don't fucking know. Medication. Yep, for ears. Aqua use only, apparently. For ears? You, you mean? Yep, it's medication Glenn Elg was using for his ruptured eardrum. Oh, by the way, you guys pointed out apparently the uh, Lisa Basil. What's well, Lisa ba Lisa Basil backwards? Oh, Lisa Basil! <laughs> what Glenn Elg's beer has been doing in the kitchen? Good question. Uh, what about the unidentified fingerprints? Anything on that? It's all screwed up, so they the only time they analyze the contents of the bottle. Another hour, and they might have gotten something on the fingerprints, but... <laughs> Sorry, we have to wait for part two of this trial, probably. When it'll be most important. Mm, that's gonna weaken the, its impact as a piece of evidence. Okay, pal, that's it. Make sure you, your offense is impregnable today, got it? Or I'll fuck you up! I'll fuck you up! It's trial. 
I'm gonna expose that guy for what he's done. Or my name is Ed Phoenix Wright. And it is. January 8th, 10 o'clock, 10 a.m. Discord fan. Uh, so he's just saying defendant lobby. I don't know. Or number four. Bra, 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 bra. Hello, everyone. We're here at the third case of this game. Now, usually this game is. This case is the weaker one, but I'm actually kind of into this. We're not cool. All right, we're here for the trial of Maggie Bird for like the 18th time. Everyone's just ready, runner. Hey, I got my coffee and I'm fucking out. Ready and waiting as always, your honor. Very good. All right. Now we'll get underway at once. That's how we heard the testimony of Mr. Victor Kuda. He claims to have witnessed the defendant putting a powder into the victim's coffee. However, the witness's testimony was plagued with a number of problems. The mark on the rim of the cup shows that the victim drank from it with his right hand. But according to the old man's testimony, he picked it up with his left hand. Mmm. Mmm. Not like this. Thank you, Mr. Grotto. Furthermore, according to the witness's count, the victim was listening to the radio with an earpiece in his left ear. Yeah, the victim's left ear drum was ruptured, which made him effectively deaf in that ear. He wasn't very bright. <laughs> so he's got any contradictions or a single case can have, buddy? Mmm, yummy. Yummy in my tummy. Mm. Ha! 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 I love saying that. Ah. <laughs> ha! Ha! Three ellipses! Exclamation point. Allow me to enlighten you, Your Honor. The world you see keeps turning, and we must turn with it. Holy shit! You lost me already, Mr. Guy. <laughs> what are you smoking, bro? I want some of that shit! Don't let the mysteries of yesterday mystify you today. Not when there's fucking crack you can pour in your coffee. Only losers think like that. You gotta change with the times. That's one of my rules. Are you implying you resolve these contradictions? You know the answers to the... Oh, you know the answers to these riddles? The old guy wasn't just throwing seeds in here. He was throwing us off the scent. Mm, the scent of fucking coffee. And today I'll prove it. Very well. Let's hear it. Let the first witness take the stand. I swear to God, I'm not going to bring up the killer this time. <laughs> like everybody else does. And you are. <laughs> oh, we Oh, bonjour. Bonjour. Everyone. I am Jean Armstrong, the owner and Ed Shift of Travian Restaurant. <laughs> Enchanté. Oh, oh, Enchanté. That's how you say that one. Enchanté. You know, it's funny. I, I've seen a lot of words. I've heard a lot of words be said in French, but I didn't know how they were spelled. I was like, oh. Enchante is the, or the one that looks like Enchante is, oh, is the Enchante one. All right, yes. <laughs> I've had so many of those realizations while, while trying to uh, speak a French accent. Forgive me for asking this, but uh, are you a woman? <laughs> come on, come on. Okay, I'm just gonna be honest. Like, I don't know why everyone, I mean, I get that he's very like effeminate and stuff and very possibly gay, but like, he doesn't look like a woman at all. <laughs> I mean, at least not in my opinion. I mean, he's got he's got a mustache, a beard, big old biceps. I mean, <laughs> oh la la! As you can see, I'm a pretty little pokey gentleman, no? Oh, um, oh wow! I am so turned on right now. Uh, so am I. Hey, should we invite him to our next threesome? Oh, you mean our next? No, actually, it's our next foursome. We've already invited that old guy, so yeah. Oh man, it's gonna get it's about to get fucking crazy over there. There's gonna be wrink wrinkle skin all over the place. Oh god. God is not feeling good. Blah, blah. Oh, the day of the incident, you were in Travian's kitchen. Isn't that right? With you, Monjo? Uh. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Everything feels right. Ah, yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm. Ha! <laughs> Wow, he's totally unfazed. There's nothing in too many of this guy. I've had dirty dreams about you too, Jean Armstrong. Let's save for that five way we're gonna have when you go with the judge over there. Oh wow, you want in too? Hell yeah! Hey Phoenix, wanna come for a six way? I wanna come in anyway! No, I don't do it. I want your six way anyway, Phoenix. Uh, you'll find out when you're... Fuck, you're already like 21. Why don't you know that? Where do babies come from? Very well, there's money, please, when asked. Hey, tell the court what happened to that day of the trade began. We volunteers. Volunteer. Vol uh, I, I bet all these words I'm saying are fucking wrong. At yeah, Trabian. When it all happened, there were two customers in my restaurant. I remember I was experimenting with some new art, art decor, decor that, that day. Like having a large mirror between la tables, for example. 
Oui, perhaps that is what the uh, old man was looking at. Le cup, la earpiece, and la glasses. He would have seen everything in reverse, no? So we had mirrors in there? M -m mirror On the inside of the booze? Dude, that'd be fucking weird as hell. It'd be like, that means the guy sitting across you would be like staring at a reflection of himself. It's like, <laughs> this is, feels weird. <laughs> or if there's nobody sitting in front of you, it looks like you're sitting in front of you. Oui, au grand mirror. La enorme, la most enormous mirror. Mmm, yummy. I love mirrors. And suddenly the mystery disappears. Uh, like I said, the world keeps turning, so roll with it. Mm, I would explain coffee cup and the earpiece conundrum. And the mirror would have made everything appear to back, back to front. What the fuck? It's too, too early in the morning for this to be happening to me. <laughs> I need some co crack in my coffee. Ah, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. All right, bring it on, you French fuck. When all I, okay, when it all happened, there were two customers in my restaurant. I knew where the two customers exactly. My, of course, la young man who died. And la other not so young man. Mm, you're referring to the yesterday's witness, I presume. Again though, and but Maggie said there was a girl in the restaurant, right? So when did the the old man left and I don't know. I I don't know what Maggie's like thinking though. Like how she's getting all this shit mixed up. That still doesn't make sense to me. You know, I, I, I mean, I would have understood if, like, she's like, I passed out and then I woke up and then I saw somebody else was there or something. But she's saying that, at the, it seems like she's saying at the same time that they saw the old man there, she saw an, a woman there. Which I'm guessing is, uh, uh, Violet, right? So, what the balls? You're very nice to I presume. What about the other man Maggie says she saw at the table? It's like, don't Mr. Armstrong is in plain and slows his existence. We need some hard evidence before we can bring him up, don't we? I guess I'll have to try a different approach for the time being. Yeah. I remember I was experimenting with some new art de decor that, that day. You were experimenting with with art deco? How come I never never heard about that, be that before today? You are not familiar with the language of interior design, Monsieur? Please stay on topic! No, I didn't you tell the court about this before. But I did just a few moments ago. Uh huh. Excuse me, Mr. Armstrong. That's deco you me at mention. Are you referring to some sort of de <laughs> de cock de deco cock deco culture? De deco culture? Shall I say that? <laughs> Not sure if that one means either. No, no. Art deco. Although the style, the style of design, Your Honor. I, I I never heard it pronounced deco. I thought it was pronounced de decor. Right? Is that something else? He's talking about interior design. Wall, ceilings, carpet, that kind of thing. Oh, yes, of course. I already knew that. That's Deco. And you're Gato. And I'm Jojo. And that's Kobedo. Oh, and this is a Bago. And my Turco. And my logo. Bugga, 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 bugga. I think I'm having a seizure. Oh. I was trying to achieve a more le, le effeminate look for my restaurant. <laughs> a more effeminate. Oh, the pink just wasn't doing it for me. I was planning the most bold remodeling of the decor. See, now he's a decor there. I, I guess deco must be something else. I never heard of that though. Like having a mirror, a large mirror between tables, for example. How big of a mirror are we talking about here? Bo! <laughs> Bo! <laughs> something about four meters wide and, uh, we oui, about two meters high. Let's see, if one meter is about one yard. Holy glass in a frame, that's huge! <laughs> Holy sweet freaking. Demon power! I was intending to install it on the ceiling eventually. The ceiling? Is there, is there a mirror or something? I don't remember. My angle is always face downwards in, in this game. <laughs> Mine no, but I decided not to go with it in the end. What should I do? Should I ask him more about the, the mirror or not? Of course I do. Why do I never want to press him more on it? It really has a large mirror at the restaurant, someone would have noticed it. But there's nothing about a mirror, Mr. Kudo, or Maggie Bird's testimonies. B -b -b but Objection. You didn't ask right. You have only your, yourself to blame for such sloppy work. What? A mirror was delivered to Dre Bien the day before the incident. R really? As Mr. Armstrong testified, he was carrying out some design changes. As it turned out, he didn't actually use the mirror in the end. It just doesn't add up. 
Even if a mirror was delivered to Travian. It doesn't prove that it was in the restaurant on the day of the crime. Ha! <laughs> ha! If you want to doubt someone, try look in the mirror. Ha! See what I did there? Ha! <laughs> Stop saying that! <laughs> I'm sure the I'm sure the person looking back at you will be dubious enough. Zing! Oh! Burr! You just got burned, right? Ah! Damn! You know, I'm just gonna call Straw right now for that wicked burn you just got! Oh! The winners yesterday had seen the victim reflected in the mirror. Okay, perhaps that is what the old man was looking at. I don't know, I don't know about that. Normally I expect people to know the difference between a real reflection and a real object. Nor normally, how does how does normality come into this? That's lame, trite. <laughs> You're lame. <laughs> That's trite, trite. <laughs> Even for you. Huh? Are you trying to say that it wasn't isn't norm something? If something isn't normal, it is impossible. Is that it? Are you saying it's not? It's are you saying it's not possible for me to shoot lasers out of my eyes? <laughs> Where does that lead the porky-headed lawyer and the top-notch chick over there? <laughs> And the ungodly cool guy with the mask over here. Well, try. <laughs> well, eat lasers. Are you telling me I didn't just shoot lasers out of my fucking mask at you right now? I don't know. Between Nico's editing and this game, it's getting hard to tell what's real anymore. Ah, not the hair. <laughs> I do not have a job done. Mr. Carl is correct. Lack of normality is no basis for discounting an argument. Yeah, lo logic is one la day. <laughs> Okay, lock up, lock earpiece, lock glasses. Uh, he would have seen everything in reverse. No. No? No! Everything, everything, he would have seen everything in reverse. Oui. Hey, Nick, we should take a second and think about what Old City said in testimony. How do you phrase it again? Who's wearing the earpiece on the same side of the green, green lantern's backs? No question, you like. You can lock me, lock me up if, you, if I'm wrong, but it was your left ear without a doubt. And then he used the same hand to pick up the cup, his left hand. We saw everything in the sky reflected in the mirror, that everything he said on the left was actually on the right, right? And that clears up all the problems with the testimony, I guess. Or does it? Ha! Ha! Stop! Ha! I'm so sick of some. Stop saying that! It's like, it's like Kameda going, <laughs> right. <laughs> It's kind of hard to believe every, the mirror, everything's the fault of a mirror, but... You think Old City saw everything through reflection? If he did, it would explain all the contradictions in his testimony. Well, that just makes us... Then you want your wish for Maggie? There's gotta be something in the old man's testimony! We just gotta dig deeper! Yeah, alright, let me... Let me have a look, see? But the vase he broke wouldn't be in reverse, right? Right, okay, that's... This is where the fucking vase comes in. Everything except for... Okay. This, yeah! Or not. <laughs> yeah, you did it, Nico. No, you didn't, Ding Dong. Oh, you suck. <laughs> oh, but his earpiece. I mean, well, he said the earpiece. But he said, what about his uh, a scouter thing, right? That was in the right place. Objection. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> yes. They got up the earpiece of the HMD. Well, let's sing back over Mr. Kudo's testimony for a second, shall we? Yeah. Who's wearing your earpiece? Same size as the green land of his specs. There we go. No question, you lock me up if I'm wrong. It was just left here right out. Of course. So to summarize, we were told both the HMD and the Urbis were on the victims of the left side. Now Mr. Kudo saw everything as a reflection in the mirror. That means the HMD and the Urbis were actually on the victims of the right side. Exactly. You see, Manjo? Now that is, you think about it, it is not so hard, no? No! The motion has to run to a monumental contradiction with the facts. And Mr. Kurt really did see everything in a mirror. Why isn't the HMD now on the wrong side of his head? Oh! Order, order! Everyone calm the fuck down, we just got started! Stride is correct! And when it's genuinely observed the victim reflected in a mirror, then we would expect the victim to say, I'll be stepping on his right eye! Ha! Ha! I'm gonna say that, ha! Ha! Uh, how bitter. Trite, you should have, ta have, t have a taste of this bitterness, so calm you down in no time. Are we talking about your coffee or something completely different? We're talking about my fucking balls. Now you don't understand the w you don't understand the way the witness thinks. How he thinks? You remember this, I presume. I bro the I broke the vase. Sorry, apology. Let I mean, Mr. Carter's sworn testimony. Exactly. The old man has a very grievous habit of the throwing seeds. The more of an impression something makes, the more muddled his mind makes it. 
like that, like that girl's sweet, sexy ass. And what's more striking, what's the most striking thing about Mr. L? Clearly, it's the victim's eyepiece. And that's my point. The old man strikes again. Mr. Elk's HMD made a big impression on the old man. I saw the earpiece in those newfangled spectacles he was wearing. Oh yes, they were both on his left ear. Do you hear? His left ear! Hmm. Ha! Ha! There we go. Well, trite. Ah! That's the worst, but best impression of Kudo I've ever... <laughs> oh. I bet. I got... I guess I should have done his old man voice there, but... <laughs> well, I really thought I was going to see there for a minute. God, was good. Is, it... Is there anything he can't do? Oh, my God, he's so amazing. Enough! I must agree that yesterday's witness was irresponsibly rash and much of his testimony. Bad luck, Dick. Looks like the boil of a contradiction you found is just a rash. Mm. A mirror can't be beaten by a handful of seeds, nor can it lie. So what exactly was the old man looking at? Fill us in, Mr. Armstrong. Go on, tell the court. We're all ears. Oh, oui, I, I can explain. Please, if you will, look at the plans of the restaurant. Okay. What bullshit are you going to throw at us this time? The mirror. Hello? Hello? Is everything sitting comfortably? La Mirs was in the middle of the restaurant, dividing le to ass. Oh, okay, I see. There is only one seat from which you can have seen the image of Le Victor. That was the seat at the table next to La Victor. To La Victims. Le that was where the old man was sitting. After La Terrible incident occurred, I moved La Mire so it was not in the way. But naturally, Ma did not touch anything else. Hmm, I see no problem with this. Why don't we just hurt? Is this, is this where the. Well, I don't know. I don't know if this is really... Does this contradict it? I don't think it does. I broke the vase of my seat. From the, t the table next to the victim, Mr. Kudo could have seen the victim in the mirror. What a naughty little co... Little co what? <laughs> what a naughty little co co coquette I am, confusing all the men like this. <laughs> Alright, I am a naughty little coquette too. You better spank me. Don't worry about it. <laughs> mm. We can keep up, except for the except for the guy breaking out in a cold sweat over there again. Ah, uh, he's right. I do sweat a lot. <laughs> I don't know how I'm not passing out from dehydration. Yeah, I hate that guy. You say you didn't touch anything else apart from the mirror. Are you quite sure about that? Volunteers, of course. Very well, Mr. Wright. Your cross examination, if you please. All right, I'm gonna get this shit this time. Oh, yes, here we go. Uh, so right, do I present this one? Yeah, or the other one. It's gotta be... Objection. Yeah, there we go. Fuck yeah! <laughs> I knew I knew it was like, there's something that, that we knew, uh, proved that the vase was broken on the other side. This be, this be, uh, this be, the means of this contradicts with the testimony we have heard, Your Honor. A crime follow up. Yes, this photo clearly shows something that theoretically should not exist. What do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? Should not exist, ha. Huh? Sounds like you're describing yourself, Trite. Mm, God, I can't get enough smelling this fucking crack in my coffee. Now the defense would please clarify a statement. What is something that should not exist in this photo? This big thing right here, baby. Things are pretty obvious that, that this is what should not be in the picture. Well, the face? Look at Paul, look at action! How's that happen with the witness's testimony? Your Honor, I'm telling you that there should have been no face on this table. Because it very clearly contradicts with this piece of evidence. Yes. Booyah! Booyah! There was one thing that clearly demonstrated by yesterday's testimony. Mr. Guru broke the face that was on the table where he was sitting. And yet, as the court can see, there is an unbroken face on the table next to the victim. Why? Because Mr. Guru was not a max sitting at the table next to the victim at all. What the balls? Do we need to get trite? That's impossible. This is only the only one Kudo could have seen the victim's reflection from. Exactly. Ah. <laughs> there is only one conclusion we can draw from this contradiction. There was no mirror in Trabian that day. 
Your testimony, Mr. Armstrong, is an elaborate lie. Aye! Mondo! <laughs> what the fuck? Don't try to confuse the court, right? Obviously, the witness cleaned up the vase. While well, the police were taking their time getting to the crime scene. Wrong again. Unfortunately, Mr. Gatto, that doesn't quite work for me. Mr. Armstrong already testified to the contrary, in his own words. I did not touch anything else except the mirror. Uh, 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 damn it. Uh. <laughs> well, witness, will you save yourself, you fucking liar? <laughs> sniffle. Uh, le sniffle. I was right, there was no mirror in the restaurant that day. In light of this revelation, we re return back to the original problem. Why are the victim having ear pieces in here when she couldn't hear? And why are you lying? That's what should I all should be asking. Ah, <laughs> uh, ha! You only get one shot in life. There's no turning back. If you want to, if you want to claim that the mirror wasn't there, trite, then this problem is all yours. How do you explain the old, the old man saw? If I can answer this, and I will be that much closer to the truth. I can feel it in my balls. Really? I'm gonna be okay. Can you really solve this contradiction? Nick? There's more. There's more. More than just this one contradiction, Maya. What do you mean? Remember Maggie told us? There's another man at the victim's table. And there was a sample CD on the victim's table. It all fly, flies in the face of Mr. Kruba's testimony. And I think I know the reason. Why nothing in this case is adding up? Well, we're right. Let's hear your answer. Blah, yes, your honor. The reason behind all the contracts in Mr. Kudo's testimony is simple. Mr. Kudo made a mistake. The ear doctor was a mistake. The victim was a phony? I'm guessing it's this one. It's because this one's the only viable one, but I don't... Why would he be a phony? The victim was a phony? Mr. Kudo made a mistake. I doubt it's that one. The ear doctor made a mistake. I'm going to say this one. This one seems the only viable one, but I, I don't really understand it. The victim was a phony. This case is riddled with contradictions. Here, yeah, there is one very simple answer that clears them all up. And what? What is that? Is what Mr. Goodwill witnessed in the incident the victim experienced. We're two completely different events. What? Yes, the victim that Mr. Goodwill saw that wasn't Mr. Elk, Glenn Elk at all. It was an imposter, a phony pretending to be Mr. Elk. Obviously, unlike the victim, there was nothing wrong with the imposter's left eardrum. That's so how he ended up wearing the earpiece in his left ear by mistake. Oh. Mm. <laughs> I knew it was coming. <laughs> not feeling good. I'm not feeling good. Or, or the court. Hell, I'll clear the court. Clear the court up. Quite crips. Why don't you clear out, clear out of here, huh? What did you say to me, you little shit? I will fuck you up. Get over here, Gallo. Get over here! Let's we'll see your lasers due to the power of my fucking Thor Gavel Hammer! Now, taste my delicious wrath! Turkey bagel powers go! Just start shooting fucking turkey bagel sandwiches out of his hand. Oh my god, what the fuck? Ah! 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 Die, you little bitch! Die! Ah! 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 Looks like Otto didn't learn that the judge is true powers until it was too late. That's right, you don't fuck with the judge, alright? Edgeworth learned that, Von Karma learned that, everybody learned that. So you're going to have to learn too, Gatto. You're going to learn today. Try. are you saying that what Mr. Gudo saw was a setup? Yes. Uh, so we pretend to be Glen Elk and act out the whole copy poisoning. Oh, that's fucking confusing. <laughs> All of the express purpose of creating a witness out of one Mr. Mr. Victor Gudo. Get real, Try. Why would anyone want to do that? Isn't it obvious? The thing Mr. Goto wasn't most insistent about in his testimony was. Hey, serving girl brought in my job, Chino, but she put something in it. Hey, serving girl right there in the fence chair. I remember her well. Uh, of course. It's so hard to believe, but. There was one and only one reason to show Mr. Goto this fake poisoning. To show Becky Burton the act of poisoning the coffee. I see. Clever. Very clever, wow. Damn, Phoenix, you were on that shit. I he figured it out before I did. I Damn. That's pretty that is that's ooh, wow, that's that's wild. Objection. Are you insinuating the waiters in the old man's story was a fake as well? 
It's true there were no other customers in the restaurant at the time, but... It's also true that the chef was there. He would have no ha noticed what was happening. Oh, well, that's, that's right. What? Well, well, witness? If your restaurant really was the same such theatrics, you would have known about, the, about it, correct? Oh, la la. This is, this is most difficult for me. Blah, blah, blah. No, it's quite simple. All you have to do is testify. You were under oath after all. <laughs> Not that it seems to make a bit of fucking difference these days. Seriously, how many, how many li- You've already lied like three times already. <laughs> and I apparently don't give a fuck. I'm not asking why you're not- why you've been lying to us. Was there a bag of Oni in the Trabian that day? It have been some mess Mr. Holmes would tell what, the whole truth about what happened. The defense's quest for additional testimony is accepted. You will accurately explain in detail the events of the restaurant that day. Oh, hooey. You little shit. In the restaurant. La victim, Mancho and Elgi, came to the rest of my restaurant alone. I remember a loud man arrived not long after Eve. There were no other customers. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> oh, so you can see the headset in his uh, his other ear this time. In his right ear. When he got word he won la, la lottery, Mon, El became very excited. Fuck yeah! Go to Hampshire! Yeah! It was approximately five minutes later that the poisoning incident occurred. No, there was no time for t for a phony to do like thing. I saw clear there was no mirror in the restaurant, after all. There was so demand, Baldon. Forgive me, your, ma your honor. I lied because I wanted this mess to be cleared up quickly. What you have just done is committed perjury, Mr. Armstrong. I should fucking arrest you, but I'm not because I'm a little bitch. I'll decide to punish you later. Don't make me use my turkey bagel powers on you. Oh, let me help out next time, too. Yeah, he's gonna help out, too. He's fucking way- He's like fucking 8,000 times crazier than I am. He'll fucking drop a meteor on your ass. Oui. For now, we will hear your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Hmm, he took the perjury a bit- Charge a bit too well. But I'm guessing he'll be in more serious trouble after this cross-examination. Oh my god, you're going down, Armstrong. Okay, so he came to the restaurant alone. I, I think the thing is, he, there was no other customers. When he got word, one of the water, he became excited. It was approximately five minutes later that the poisoning occurred. I think it's, there was no other time for a phony to do, there's no time for a phony to do the acting. Wrong, 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 wrong. There's a whole bit of time, right? What, let's see, where was it? So is it, is it this one? Okay, no. Was he alone at his table as well? My oui? I, I saw him from Black Kitchen. If the defendant, Miss Bird, remembered, remembers it differently. She swears there was another man at the victim's table. Ha! Fortunately for you, Miss Trite, yesterday's witness alone testified that the victim was alone. Ah! You know, seeing you squirm at like that reminds me of a certain coffee's bittersweet bite. Look at that coffee, has he been drinking? That coffee, it's love! It's love that's bittersweet! You guys love each other! Now back out, please! Never mind, say that makes, me seem, makes her seem wise all of a sudden. Wait, what is she talking about? You want a two or a mick out? I don't know about that. The old man, you mean Victor Gudo, correct? Oui, it comes often for my special coffee. I, I drink your coffee once, Mr. Elmstrong. It's special, I'll give you that. It tastes like horse shit. It's worth a sip just for the experience. Oh, you make me so happy, Moncho. You are most welcome any time. Hey, fuck that. I'm never going back there. I said it was worth one sip and nothing more. You're not getting any. It tastes like straight manure. Oh, from where I come from, that is the compliment. <laughs> the fuck is wrong with you people? So, Miss Kuro arrived at the restaurant around the same time as the victim. Maybe I should ask about his arrival in more detail. Okay, here we go. How many minutes after what What time was it? I'm curiosity about what time was it when Mr. Kuro arrived. Oh, no. I cannot remember, Monsu. Oh, I believe we were told by a witness yesterday. The crime was reported by 225 by a kind of scary old man, sir. Yes. Was that perhaps dog your memory witness? Lansing happened about 20 minutes after he arrived, so the victim must have arrived between 2 o'clock and 2.10, no? Hmm. That was after 2, huh? Thank you for all the help jogging my memory, Monsu. You are wonderful. 
Ha 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 ha
Where could a body have been hidden inside the restaurant? Perhaps you could care to show the court on these these flammists, right? Yes, Your Honor. The location where the body was concealed inside the Jerry Inn is. It's gotta be in it's gotta be in the kitchen. The body was in here. I see. Nice supposition. The real question is, can you back it up? Where's the evidence that proves the body was hidden in that location? Uh, this thing? Yeah! Mr. Armstrong, do you recognize this bottle? I, it still doesn't really prove that, I mean, I mean, his medicine was in a separate bag, though. It wasn't attached to his body, right? I don't know. Do you recognize this bottle? No, 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 no! I have uh, never seen this ugly little bottle in my, in my life. I only use the uh, very best bottles, I'm sure it's the highest quality only for me. Where's that bottle found, Mr. Wright? Easily enough, your honor was found in the kitchen of Trabian. Eh, cool, cool. But I only ever use these bottles for my aromatherapy oils. Blah, but this bottle doesn't contain aromatherapy oil, Mr. Armstrong. No, it contains a medication. What kind of medication? I use every kind in the book. It's the only way I could stay alive. I am over 300 years old. I'm sure everyone remembers, don't they? That Mr. Oak visited the uh, toddler blah, 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 clinic, and he was given a medication that day. Ah, you can't be serious. You've got to be shitting my balls, dude. I went inside the context of the bottle. Analyzed, and I have the lab results here. The contents of the bottle match the prescription that was given to Mr. Oak. Boom! <laughs> My dog's murder hid the, the body in the restaurant kitchen. At which time, this bottle fell out of the victim's pocket. Oh, okay. I thought it was in the bag. Oh, well, I guess he, he must have taken it out of the bag and put it in his pocket. Mr. Armstrong, when the incident occurred, didn't you say you were in the kitchen? m m, -m, -m Yes, you know what I'm about to say. It was you in the victim's body. You did a fine job pretending to defend my client, Maggie Bird. However, you are sending her up to take the ball behind the poor girl's back. <laughs> nah! Oh, oh, oh! There's a extraordinary development. I didn't see this shit coming. <laughs> Witness, did you? Did you murder Mr. Gladow? Never. I could not do such a horrible thing. Oh, shit. So Oh, what? No. My energy, my power level is growing. Growing. Oh, my God. This freaking demon power is too much. Oh. oh, my God. He's listening to true power. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Come in. Oh. Oh my god, what's happening? Oh, everyone's dead. We're all fucking dead. <laughs> You're right there, Nico. I am I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> Scotto! Mmm. The bitterness. The bitterness. Every time I get lied to, I always down a mug of coffee. That's one of my rules. Do you have the size idea of how many cups you've had by now? <laughs> then I like to do the same to the person who lied to me. I like to take them down with my empty cup. Listen up, chef. How about a brand new flavor in your ear, my H-deficient, deficient friend? Je vous demande pardon. Please, you must hear me out. It is a trap. Listen to me. <laughs> it's a trap. Por favor. Por favor. A Spanish. Yo hablo espanol, master. I'm strong and por favor, Spanish. You can't speak for, you can't speak French for shit. I'm only going to ask you once. Did you do it? Did you fucking do it? No, no, absolutely no. I simply, I... Let's hear it. Let's... You got one shot, one opportunity. Right, Gramps? Or, where is the court? We'll bring you to cha a chance to make one final statement. If you lie under oath again, I'll take you outside and fuck you in the streets. Mr. Connell's calling you, Michael, wait you. That's just my gavel to your testicles. Oui, it is clear. What do they always do? What do, they, what do they always say in the movies? I've got a bad feeling about this. Very well, begin your final testimony, Mr. Armstrong. The confession. It is true. I had a body in the kitchen. A man forced me to do it. I had no choice. I had to go along with him because... There is a reason why I could not refuse, but I did not kill him, I swear it. You must believe me. You're forced? By who? I cannot say or I will be 
erased? Let's try a different question then. When Mr. Elk died, was he really the only person at his table? There was... There was another man. I knew it! Now you was telling the truth, fuck you! My cross down the window's not much right. There's just one more thing I need to do. I gotta break this guy and get him to tell us the name of the real killer. The real killer! Alright, bring it on, Cyclops. I'm about to fuck you. I'm about to fucking fuck you. I get so pumped! Should I just go, is this, do I just present this here? Yeah, okay, here we go. It's not really a contradiction, it's more just getting him to say the thing that I need, want him to say. You have half a million dollar debt, don't you? Half a million dollars? It's true, Mr. Armstrong! Oui, je suis désolé. I was weak and I borrowed a lot of money. As, as Mr. Armstrong's Achilles heel. And that's why you couldn't refuse anything asked of you by this man. This evil demon lord. I really don't a loan from a black market loan shark. And you had no way of paying it back, did you? That's why you were forced to do anything. This man told you to. Oui, it is as you say. Mr. Armstrong. La Tiger, he told me it was... He was going to use my restaurant for a business rendezvous. On the day in question, he was meeting a love victim to demand that he repay his loan. I don't know why it happened like that. I just did what he told me to do. I had no choice. I carry La Party along inconscient Maggie after La Dining Area. And into the kitchen after that, I just tried to forget what I had seen. I think we can now safely say that the man who forced your hand was Mr. Furio Tigre. <laughs> Stick his tongue in like an idiot. I do have one further question for you, Mr. Armstrong. Boys, in the lottery ticket where Scott re recovered from the fence apron pocket. What was that you're doing as well? No, I knew nothing about that. Making it look like it was Maggie who had done it, I, I was not. It is despicable. Mr. Cardo! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you will summon this fear of Tigger as a witness. I doubt that it can be arranged today, so we will adjourn for now. Proceedings will continue tomorrow. Whatever. <laughs> mm. 30 minutes. Uh -oh. What? The trial will go on. I'll see to it myself. I need half an hour to get that guy on the stand. <laughs> Not a minute more. <laughs> God, is there, any, is there anything you can't do? That's why they call me God. Oh. <laughs> How the? Don't sit back and relax yet, Trite. I've got fucking lasers in my eyes. You forget that? I can make it do anyone do anything I want. I can destroy half the city if I fucking want to. No one knows if that chef is really telling the truth or not. This trial could still go either way. Very well, your request is granted, Mr. Gatto. We'll resume once Mr. Tigre is ready to take a stand. Do it! Course adjourned for 30 minute recess! Woo! Monkey bars! I love monkey bars, monkey, monkey, monkey bars! <laughs> Calm down, Judge! To be continued! Alright. Well, it all seems to me. It, okay, that really was my major uh, thing. I think I've. I, I think everything's pretty much figured out by now. That was, that was the big, like, uh, mystery to me, was how. The two testimonies were so different. It's like, and if they supposedly occurred at the same time. Ah, oh, God, I feel so much better to find, like, that was driving me crazy. I was like, what is it? Uh, I'm, I don't know, is there anything left that I don't understand? I don't think so. I, I don't know. There might still be something that'll pop up later. But, uh, yes, next time will be the finale of this case, and then we'll move on to the fourth and final case of the game, which, uh, uh, is usually. Usually the best case in the game. Although, I'll be perfectly honest, I actually think I like this case better than I like the, the second case. The last case, uh, the, the case that came before this. But yeah, you guys said also the fourth case of this game is supposed to be really good. Like, some of you guys said you thought it was... Some of you guys have tried arguing between you thinking the, 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 the last case of the second game was the best, or the last case of, the fourth, of this game was the best, but... So it should be really good, so I look forward to that. But anyway, like for you, enjoy, subscribe now, become Piggy Bang Wonder Boy, the SLP, where the days are always sunny. 
It's always funny. Until next time, guys, stay classy.